So we've reached the point in the semester where uh, we're moving on to animation and we can leave UV unwrapping behind us for the rest of the semester, basically. Uh, so what we're going to do today is, is focus on a walk cycle and not even a full walk cycle, a lower half walk cycle, right? Hips, uh, legs, feet, I'm not going to worry about arms and shoulders and head. Uh, that will come next week. Uh, but this is to get you familiar with not just the walk cycle, but also kind of animating character movement. This is obviously a step up from uh, animating bouncing balls and swinging chains and things like that. So uh, here's the rig that we will be using. This is called the Ultimate Walker rig. It is freely available from the internet. Um, it was created by Uger Olvi Yediskin, something like that. I'm sure that's not the right way to pronounce that name, but... Um, it's really available from a number of different sites, and it's a great kind of learning rig. So uh, that's what we're going to be working with. And then as reference, we're also going to be using or referring to um, this book, which is kind of the Bible of animation of all sorts, uh, available on Amazon. Again, there's the regular version, which is 24 bucks paperback, and the expanded edition, which has an additional 60 or so pages for 40 bucks. Um, it's a big, heavy book full of amazing information from a guy who learned from the Disney Masters and um, was in charge of animation for Roger Rabbit. So, great resource if you're in any way serious about animation. This is the book to get. Now, all that being said, let's look at this rig. Uh, so there's not a whole lot going on here. There's not a whole lot of controls, which is ideal for, for day one of character animation. But let's look at what controls we do have. We have first this large circle around here. Um, you can see it is listed as the control main shape. Uh, control main, you can see it right there. I'm going to keep the channel box open because we're going to be referring to that repeatedly. And if we select this shape and hit W, uh, we can move it around. And you can see how the feet stay in place. Uh, and I'll talk about why that is in a moment. We can also rotate. I'm going to make this a little bit larger so we can see that better. We can rotate the uh, center. You can think of these as the hips. right? If this was a character, this is where the hips would be in any way. Um, and we cannot scale it. You see when I hit R to bring up the scale tool, everything is grayed out. Okay? And that means that there, there are limits applied to this, um, this control bone, this rig, uh, that prevent certain transformations. And this is one of those limits. Um, and that's fine. We don't need that anyway. So we got move and rotate. Uh, let's move up first. Now we have this bone, which is called Control Top. You'll see if we hit W, we can move it up and down. And you can see in our channel box, we've got Translate Y and nothing else, which should be a clue as to what controls you have. You cannot move this forward and back or left and right. You cannot rotate. You cannot scale. This is really just to give some of that kind of bouncing ball compression and expansion. Right, squash and stretch, one of those 12 principles of animation, which I'm sure you've heard about before. Uh, so that's that bone. And then moving on down, uh, we've got this big triangle, which is the root bone, which if you want to move the whole rig around, that's the one that you use. You can also see if you select that in the channel box layer editor, we have a global scale option. That's what you can use to adjust it if you need to resize it for any uh, reason. Maybe you're going to have a, a second copy of this and you want like a, uh, a parent. Oops, that's not what we want. We actually need to grab the whole thing. That's probably not the way to duplicate it. Um, maybe you want some like kid versions of it, then you can just scale it down with the whole thing. Uh, let me also open up my outliner just so I have that going on. Yeah, okay. I can't just, oh, there, it duplicated for a second, but 
All right. Um, and then we're not really going to worry about that today because we're just going to do a walk cycle in place. Uh, we have these foot bones, which have an IKFK blend. And so I've talked about this a little bit, I think, but they're kind of two different methods or control structures of animating things like limbs, and that's forward kinematics, which is FK, and inverse kinematics, which is IK. Uh, by default, it is set to IK, right? That's what the value of one means. Uh, if you set that to zero, then it goes to FK. So let's look at a practical uh, example of what the difference is. With, uh, with FK set, so IK, FK blend is at zero. FK, we've got the bones, new bones show up, new control points show up. Um, and we can't move them, but we can rotate them. And the way that this works is you animate going from the top down, right? Forward down the limb to the extremities. Let me, uh, plus and minus, by the way, we'll, we'll change the size of your manipulator. Uh, so if we wanted to animate the walk, we would have to grab the hip and then the knee, and then we grab the ankle, right? And we go that way, and then we can grab kind of the ball of the foot and rotate that back. That's, that's kind of how the FK process works. Um, most rigs will have this control in some form for each of the limbs. Usually, uh, you'll want to keep, I say usually, you know, you can go either way, but usually you'll want to keep the, the legs at IK because you want the feet to stay planted, um, and you'll want the, the arms to be at FK. All right, so if, if I've got kind of another example here, if I have the right leg here is at FK and the, and the left leg here is at IK, inverse kinematics, um, you see if I grab the left leg and um, actually this is the bone to manipulate the, the, the actual foot. If I move that around, you can see the, the rest of the leg follows, right? So if I grab the hips and move it, you can see now, when I get too far, that, that left leg will move anyway. But as long as I'm not overextending the left leg, the FK leg, so the, the, um, the right leg, the red leg, that's moving with the hips because that's FK, right? It's the parent is controlling it. Whereas the left leg, which is inverse kinematics, the foot is kind of what's controlling where that leg is. And since I'm not moving the foot, I'm just moving the hips, everything kind of stays put. Okay, so you can kind of see the practical differences uh, there. When you want something to stay where you put it, a foot or a hand, IK is great. Um, but FK works better if you're just like swinging arms. Um, you know, let's say that if we, tend, if we pretend the leg is an arm and you're just swinging your arms at your side, this is a whole lot easier to do than if I grab here and we want to animate it. You know, we go here and then we kind of swing it back, but it won't naturally have an arc because the foot is just going to go from here to here and it's not really an arc. So, um, you know, FK would be better for, for that sort of swinging motion. Uh, and that's really it for the controls. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry, I lied. There's a bunch of more or less hidden controls that we need to talk about. Uh, and that is, let me set the, the leg back to... IK because that's where we're going to keep it for today. Undo a little. There we go. All right. So if I grab this um, IK control bone, which is this kind of diamond shape behind the heel, and look at my channel box, we see we've got our translates and our rotates, uh, and then we have this extras section. And the extras section has uh, pivot control, foot roll, foot break, toe roll, leg twist, heel twist, ball twist, toe twist. Um, and if we select each of these and middle click and drag, we can kind of see what they do. So foot roll kind of rocks that whole foot back and forth. Foot break. Uh, there we go. All right, and that sort of thing. Uh, if I bring that foot roll up, then you can see how that, that foot can break the other way. All right. 
kind of that sort of motion. Uh, toe roll is similar to foot break, but not quite. So if you want to tap your toe, all right? Leg twist. This is a subtle thing, but if we kind of zoom in here, okay, twisting the leg. Heel twist. Okay, so if you want maybe a little bit more kind of, whoops, that's not what I wanted. You know, maybe their toes point in or maybe their toes point out. You know, you've got that control. Ball twist. So it's twisting with the ball of the foot being the pivot point. And then toe twist, which is kind of the toe of the foot is the pivot point. Okay, and then the, the left leg has those same controls. Okay, so you get additional functionality um, here with that, that rig. And we will be using the foot roll and the foot break here for the walk cycle. Um, so those are the controls you have, and that's it. It's a pretty simple, oh, actually, <laughs> I keep saying that's it. I forgot about these two. Uh, so what these are is, it says knee PV control. And basically this is the knee target. So if I take the foot and if I move it up, say there, and then I grab the, this knee target. Where I move this knee target defines where that knee is pointing. Okay. Uh, and if I go behind the knee, then the knee goes backwards and now he's like a flamingo. Or she, I don't know. I don't need to gender this walking sphere. Um, but that's what that knee control does. Uh, for the most part, we're just gonna be keeping it in front. But you know, you can use those, you can use all these tools to help give personality and style to this walk. We're going to do a pretty straight down the middle um, average walk, um, but the homework assignment will be to, uh, you know, do a walk cycle with personality and then a little bit more. But we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So here is our rig. Let's get ready to animate.